welcome to my sewing room. Today, I have Lori Taylor with me. Lori is one of the most creative fashion designers that I know. Lori's combination of fabric, buttons and trims make her outfits unique and highly collectible. She's going to share great ideas for finishing your garments and ideas for making your garments unique. You will love her fashion tips and ideas. Get ready for our fashion sewing savvy experience and you will be the next great designer. I am so happy to have as my guest today, Lori Taylor and Phyllis Hoffman. Lori is president of the Design House of Taylor G. Phyllis is the publisher of Southern Lady Magazine, Southern Baby Magazine, and Tea Time Magazine. Lori and Phyllis, welcome to the show. Thank you for having us, Martha. Martha, I'm so excited today. Lori Taylor is with us and she is a fabulous fashion designer, but what I love about her garments is that home sewers like me can achieve that same look with a creative use of trims, buttons, and fabrics. And so Lori has brought examples sometimes using the same fabric of how we can vary our look mm -hmm. and give our sewing that boutique look. Mm -hmm. Lori, let's go through some of these beautiful garments. Well, our team, we put together some of the most wonderful things. We love to look at the different trims and the buttons, mixing fabrics together, maybe where they shouldn't always be. This is an upholstery fabric, wow, which right. sometimes <laughs> you might use as a pillow, but what a wonderful jacket. We've used a satin on the collar with a velveteen. And notice the little rosettes on the pockets. That I love gives it. it a cute, sassy little look. And that's a wonderful pairing there. I loved all the different buttons you use on the front of the jackets. Our buttons are our, our home base hit every time. Now these, if you notice, we've done a solid with a kind of a little flirty sleeve on that too. Same with the other jacket. We've got a rosette on the collar. We've added back with the different colored buttons for that one to make it a little jazzier. Simpler on the oh, first they one. Are jazzy. Aren't they they're fun? wonderful. They're, they're showstoppers. Every time right. I wear right. Lori Taylor things, people stop and say, "Oh, you, know you look I so want pretty." One of those. I want you. Well, that's I right. And home sewers can now have they them. Can. They can. That's right. And I love the use of color on black and white. Absolutely. Right. Well, we love black and white. <laughs> always. Adding always. Type of color is great. These are classic garments, and Lori, okay. you use the fabrics here is marvelous. This is a lovely woven linen, and the stripe is a very elongating look. It gives you a nice slim feel with the darts in the right spot. We We've used a cute little trim on here that says Love Amour, which is sweet, and a sheer on the top. On the second jacket, it's a little bit uh, busier, I would say, with a real cute dyed to match buttons and the trim also on the collar. Two different looks, double collars, lots of fun ways to create a garment. Just creative and fun is, is what I call these. Is. All right, now here, now we have a trio. We do. Okay. I'll let you hold that okay, one. Okay, got it. Okay. Go. Now this one, we've taken the same body, which is a linen blend, and we've mixed it back with a silk embroidered organza. Here we did the same thing, a different look with a sheer sleeve, and then we gave you a tailored look with kind of a pinstripe suiting business casual. Mm -hmm. So you've got three different looks, and, and it can show you how you can mix your fabrics and create things and step out of the box. Well, home sewers like me were educated that you use light kind fabric. If you used a heavy fabric, then you used it consistently on the whole mm -hmm. garment. But I think you have shown we're mixing our different weights it's and textures. Wonderful adds a real smart look. Out yeah. of the box, breaking the rules. Don't you yes, think that's what that's, we're that's all about? Motto. For creative <laughs> home sewing, absolutely. absolutely. That's what we're all about today. And to think that I can achieve this, At I home. think is fabulous because I love things that look mm -hmm. handmade, but not labeled as homemade as we were growing up thinking, mm -hmm. oh well, that's not a boutique oh, look, goodness. but now it is. This is wonderful. And the fit, Phyllis, I find that, that if, it's, if it's made, I can get the fit. I'm two different sizes on the top and the bottom, and I bet a lot of our viewers will certainly identify with that. Now, I can have a top that fits and a bottom that fits. And they're wonderful That's looking. Great. Oh, Lori, what else do you I have? Know, I love this little blouse right here. This is a silk dupioni, just as simple as can be, but we have come back and put five or six different wonderful French trims here. You could just go crazy. You could do this in a black and do a black and white series. Anything that you have it around, it makes it very special to do it like that. We've got another one here, kind of in the same pink family where we've used an embroidered organza again. And this little trim, and you're gonna love to make this, is used out of hem tape. Hem tape is what we normally would use around the taping of our skirt to finish the hem off. Here we've gathered it, used it as a trim. 
Isn't it wonderful? I think that is just amazing. It's very Hem fun. tape, which has been gathered yes. with this wonderful uh, bullion rosebuds yes. on the black yes. and those sassy buttons Aren't on the front. Cute? Absolutely fabulous. This color is called lipstick, and I think <laughs> this <laughs> color coordinating your fabric like the solid linen with the mm -hmm. accent colors on a completely different colored fabric is a very unique mm -hmm. thing to do. Lots of fun. And our last piece. It, it's wonderful to mix. Now this is a cutaway silk velvet, and, and, and I don't know if you can see it real clearly, but it's almost sheer. So your oh, arm that. shows so through just that. a little bit, and we've used a, a sequin trim here, which is the hottest thing around right now. It, they just love it, love it, love it. And this is an embroidered bengalin, which oh. gives it a nice fitted feel, and then you've got the sexy little sheer sleeves. Oh, Great I pieces. love that. I love it. Lots you know what ways. the most exciting thing is? I love the way you put it all together. It's fun. And Lori, that's great fun team. to have you. We do have a great team. And it's fun to have you now in our industry where where Lori's ideas we can have as the home sewers because it's really hard for me to know now what goes with what. But Lori, mm -hmm. I'm so glad that you're working with us in the home sewing industry mm -hmm. now. So indeed, I and you can have things that look, we know how to sew, but sometimes I don't know what to put together. And I bet you can identify with that. Lori, thank you so thank much. You. And I understand yes. you have some more wonderful ideas. And Phyllis, thank you very thank much. You, and I understand you have some more wonderful things to share with our viewers. We do. Some sewing yeah. inspirations from Lori Taylor. Lori, tell us about this wonderful series of clothes we have here. We have great things to show you today, Martha. This particular item on the end is a wonderful linen blend. We've used inspired antique appliques on the front, if you notice, with the little pearl buttons and a wonderful hand done tooling on the hem. That is just the, the sweetest, sweetest jacket. It's also very forgiving. Very, very forgiving and flattering. Covers lots of yes, wonderful. Yes, I love that jacket. <laughs> it is. That's a great one. And I one. also love the next, the green it one. Is, it is. And those little tabs add such a cute little flair to it. The looping around the collar could be done in a contrasting fabric. You can buy that by the yard or, or make it yourself like that in a, on a different color. The hem, if you notice on the garment, is a wonderful combination of all three fabrics with the cute little I dot with the that green and blue. Ruffle. Isn't that Finish fun? with a serger on the edge, it I might add. It is. Narrow edge serging. It is. It's a great jacket. And the white outfit is another favorite oh, with all kinds of options. The white linen. And I'll tell you what, using those vintage hankies around the hem is just the best part. And if you notice on the bottom, we've used pieced hankies. And those are pleated and, and it gives it a wonderful look. You can have just a wonderful time with that by bringing back this is what we call our item shirt. Our that is so creative oh, and so fun. Isn't it wonderful. Now, we what about the, the hankies on the bottom? The tips. Those are the tips of the hankies, and that's done with a cute little taping that you put the buttons on, and then the covered buttons down the front with the wonderful patchwork on the front. Isn't that a beautiful? And that's piece? originally a purchase shirt. It is, which has been embellished with all those it wonderful is. hankies. So don't have to do too much sewing on that one. <laughs> and over here, this again goes back with the skirt, with the pleating on the bottom like this and the covered buttons. Again, you can bring back your item shirt and put that with those pants and your tips just match wonderfully. Isn't that cute? Oh, oh That's Lori, great. it is so cute. I love it. And you know what, if you if you love white, great, but couldn't you use navy or you could, you could use any of those colors to pull out any of the hankies oh, for any season wonderful. of the year, really. Bring back your little pants. We've done the pleated little cute pants to go back with that. Isn't that fun? Oh, it is with the handkerchiefs on the bottom. You just can't beat that. Lori, some of the ladies have told me they have handkerchiefs of their grandmothers that oh, they would like to use. Wouldn't that be great? Oh, it would be a wonderful way. And some people do yes. collect hankies. Show us that it other is. green suit that I love so oh, much. Oh, this one right here is great. Flattering, this, Oh, isn't flattering, that beautiful flattering. little skirt in an open? <laughs> no buttons on this one. Very fun. Very I love the way the jacket is just tied. It is. And you look the, wonderful in this outfit. This, I've seen this you This is it. my favorite is, one. And you know great. what? That skirt can be made in about uh, 30 minutes. It's, it's totally made on wonderful. the serger. And our home sewers will love knowing that that skirt can be, uh, we call that the serger skirt. It's a great and skirt. And really, all of these items are very easy to make. They are. They and are. It, and they fit, and they're all forgiving, and it's just wonderful. We and love thank, bringing this to the home sewing. Thank you thank for you bringing so this much. to the home uh -huh. sewing market for yes. the very first time, Lori. And now we have some scrapbooking ideas for you.
These are two of my very favorite sewing scrapbook pages in the whole world. I just can't wait to share them with you. Now, if you go to an event, this one happens to be from Martha's Quilt Academy in Huntsville, but if you go to an event and there's a beautiful brochure, you might just make a photocopy of the brochure. This one was reduced in size, and actually it's, actually it's glued down, but there are little safety pins to act as if that's what's holding it to the page. And if you win a ribbon of some kind, you can put your ribbon there. This happens to be an antique sewing machine which has been embroidered on organdy then cut out and glued to the page now the page has been covered with a piece of fabric that is pre-printed to look like it's quilting fabric even though it isn't it, it's just printed to look like this and to look as if it already has the patchwork done wonderful way to save your souvenirs from a sewing event this is so much fun. You're going to love these ideas. This particular scrapbook page started as a pattern piece. You can see that. There are some antique snaps. This particular machine embroidery was sewn on fabric. Uh, use your fray check around the edge and then cut out and then glued down. And this is a cat sitting behind a sewing machine. You know, cats really do like to sew. So this cat is asleep around the sewing machine. This is another machine embroidery that has been embroidered on fabric and then the fray check is put around it and then it's glued down. And these little scissors are antique scissors and there's a little antique piece of a measuring tape. I know my mother had one that was kind of worn out like that. This really takes me back to my home in Scottsboro, Alabama. And then there are just some more little antique -y things which I think in order to do another one like this, maybe for my daughter, I'm gonna go in my mama's old sewing box. This is just wonderful. Of course, buttons and zigzag the picture down. Here is the pattern. You can use a pattern to cover your um, scrapbook page, which I think that's a great idea for a sewing scrapbook page and then it zigzagged down on the edges what a perfect way to finish the edges of a pattern that covers a scrapbook page and then it has the scrapbook page the actual paper behind it there were just so many little goodies here of course you use a paper pattern here's another piece of that little oh, wonderfully worn out tape measure now once again if you do use uh, em embroidery and these are antique uh, machine embroidery designs, you do them on fabric and you go around with a seam sealant all the way around the edge before you cut out that embroidery and let it dry before you cut it out. That way, it will, even if you made a little snip that was in the wrong direction, it still would not go into your machine embroidery. If you don't want to use your antique scissors, now if you look at this one, we used the antique scissors on our scrapbook page, but if you really don't want to uh, permanently attach your antique scissors. You can just simply run it through your copier, make a photocopy of your antique scissors, and then just glue it down. And of course, you've got your cat, you've got your snaps, you have buttons, you have just a little bit of everything. And now I would like to invite you to share a home decorating project with me. This exquisitely beautiful silk pillow we have done in Victorian colors of lavender and white, but it is so versatile, the puffing pillow. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make in a minute. But let me give you some ideas on what you could use. Anytime you have a palette in the middle of a pillow, it's the perfect place for machine embroidery. It's also the perfect place to put uh, the name of the bride and groom and the wedding date or to put a birthday. I know we had a big, wonderful party for my mama's 80th birthday and a pillow like this would be so nice. And by the way, this would be just as good looking done in black uh, with black lace, you know, to go into a living room or a den or navy blue or burgundy. You can choose whatever colors you want to. Now, this is the easiest pillow to make. If you will notice, there is puffing on this corner, on this corner, on this corner, on this corner. Then there's simply trim that's been applied to the top and the machine embroidery or whatever you want to use in the middle. And you know another way of using this pillow? If you have made Maybe a, a pretty little antique crochet doily or any family treasure that someone has made. This will be a great pillow to incorporate it in the center. And then be sure you always put a, a tag, on, I mean, a, a label on the back saying what it is and who made it. But this is a great artist palette pillow, I call it. Okay, first of all, you're going to trace off your large square in the center, mark the center for whatever you want to put on the center. Then you see the corners 
That is where the puffing is going to go. So on the base pillow, now this one is Ecru, I'm showing you now, but of course, if, the, if you were using the lavender pillow, then this would be lavender. And you're going to go ahead and do your machine embroidery in the middle. Now then, the puffing is really kind of a wide piece of puffing. I think this is maybe six or seven inches. And remember, you run gathering rows for puffing. And this place, this time I just ran one row of gathering, or you could use your gathering foot on your sewing machines. Always when you pull gathers, remember to pull the bobbin thread because it makes the gathers pull a lot more easily. I'm going to gather one side and then the other side on all these strips that I need to go on the corners. Now that I'm going to, you see I have the strips are gathered here. On the design template I originally drew on the Silk Dupioni, the, the corners are marked. So I'm going to carefully look underneath there and pin, look underneath there and pin the sewing line or even a little bit above that sewing line on the straight lines. Now as you can see I zigzag on the lines zigzag around the edges and then cut away the edges. Now it is easier to zigzag and to sew from the back because once you get pinned very carefully because from the back you can actually see the lines you can see through the fabric or you can even mark it on the back. Then after your pieces of puffing are sewn on that looks like you have some raw edges you do that's kind of raw edges that's not too pretty there but guess what we're going to cover it up with some trim. So after you get all four of the puffing edges, and by the way, on the center you could use a motif, you could use, as I said, there's so many things you could do, including putting a name in a special occasion. This is a great pillow. Then you take your trim after you've done all the puffing pieces. You know, I think I'll just pull this original pillow down here. After you've zigzagged it right on top, now remember, this is, this is kind of ugly puffing seam underneath there. I've zigzagged it, then right on top of that stitching, you put down your trim and zigzag on both sides, and then it completely completely covers up that raw stitching and it is absolutely beautiful. Then needless to say, of course, you're going to put the top of the pillow on the back of the pillow, sew them together and then stuff them or else use a pillow form. This one was stuffed because we just used a plain pillow back. Sometimes we have a pillow back which is separated. Isn't that a beautiful pillow to use it? it matter of fact, it would be beautiful done in a plaid. If you wanted to put it in a plaid den, it would be beautiful for just any occasion I can think of. And with the right fabrics, it would be beautiful for any room I can think of. And next, I have some hand embroidery stitches to share with you. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today my friend Beverly Sheldrick from New Zealand. Beverly is a regular contributor to So Beautiful magazine. She has taught needlework all over the world and she teaches regularly at the School of Art Fashion in Huntsville. Beverly, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Martha. Thank you. Now, Martha, today for our visitors or our viewers, because they are visitors, aren't they? Certainly visitors, visitors in our to, room. to your yes. show. So we're going to talk about this jonquil here. Now, it's a, it's an unusual little flower and not the easiest one to do, but we're going to attempt to. Now, it's most unusual because normally a flower will have five petals, but this one we're going to actually have six. So you will see that I've put the first three here, just three little straight stitches. And here I've done the other half, so we've now got six. And you leave a slightly bigger uh, circle in the middle than you would normally. Um, normally we just fill it with a French knot, don't we? But we do yes. need a little bit more space there for that. Then you will see that I've taken the darker color here and I've made this little round trumpet here. And then to secure that trumpet, then I've put a French knot in the middle here. You can see it's just peeping out there. And that, of course, holds the whole thing secure. So I'm just going to show you how to do that. And you will see that I have already started that. And that's just thread it come out. But it's, you can see that when that goes down, it will just go down there like that. Very simple. Now. You can see here, I've actually drawn them in to make sure that I got them evenly distributed because I'm so used to doing five that you, you know you go on automatic pilot and before you realize it, you've um, 
five instead of six, <laughs> which is what we want. So you can see how it's just a straight stitch, ladies. Uh, just pull it like that, no problems, nothing really different. Just don't pull them too tight. Now comes the tricky part. And you will see, I've got my ribbon already there. I've come from the back. You will also see that I've got some machine thread in my second needle and I've brought it from the back and I've come up right beside where the silk ribbon came up. Now normally of course I would use a matching colour but to make it easier to see I've, I'm using a slightly different colour. Now what you're going to do is this, you're going to put this over your finger like this and I'm just going to take some little tiny whip stitches on the, just going over the edge, just catching a little bit of that, that uh, f silk ribbon there. And you're doing them reasonably close together like this. Now I will do anything up to 10 of these little stitches around here. And I'm just hoping that you can see that. My hand isn't in the way too much, but you can see how I'm doing those little little stitches like that. And I'm just going to put in just a few more because otherwise I haven't got enough to go round. So here I am. I've probably done about eight. I haven't been counting them. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull those up like Ooh, that. Okay. And you see, so this is going to come round like this, forming a little circle. I'm just going to anchor my needle here like that. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to just put that in there like that. I'm going just a little bit further than where I first started. So here I am. I'm just taking this through. I'm just going to put my finger on there to hold it where I want it and then I will pull those last through pieces and I'm going to put that in through to the back like that. You can see how I've now got a fluttery little center. And you basically gathered it. Yes, okay. yes, but it, it's a whip stitch, Martha, okay. and that's the secret to remember rather than a gathering stitch, okay. a whip stitch. It gives you a far more secure uh, side. And of course, last but not least, it's that French knot. And again, I've actually used a piece of number eight pearl. It gives me a nice strong knot for the center. And again, I'm going to give it three wraps. So here we are, there's my third wrap. And when I take this in here like this, then you will see that it will just hold that little petal or trumpet, whatever you like to call it, in the middle, just nice and firmly like that. Uh, of course, normally you wouldn't do something that was such a strong color, but it just means that it shows up a wee bit. So you can see how that is just sitting in there nicely, just holding that in place. And of course, the stem is just that stem stitch or outline stitch, whichever, you, whichever direction you're heading in. Thank you so much, Beverly, for showing us how to do that wonderful flower. And now I would like to share a vintage garment with you. This little christening coat is just fabulous. So let's go ahead and look at it so I won't waste any of your precious time. Look at the little rows of puffing. It's made out of net netting, by the way, cotton netting, with a tiny little French trim in between. Now, before we look at the cape, I want to hold it up and show you this exquisite little coat made out of netting and the little French trim in between the seams. It has the tiniest little row of puffing on the sleeve that I have ever seen in that wonderful French lace. Okay. Now let's look at this beautiful cape that comes over. So pretty. It has these sweetest little motifs, the delicate little flowers, and then so interesting, the hem has also been put in with those pretty little flowers. This time it's a straight piece. Wouldn't that be beautiful in machine embroidery or hand embroidery, either one? Then we're going to come down to the skirt and we're going to see that same trim and the beautiful French edging and that tiny, tiny little French piece. You know what? It looks a little bit like entredeau, but it isn't. It's a French beading of sorts. That same beautiful, delicate, delicate embroidery that goes all the way around the christing coat. And, and let me just turn it around 
to show you the back. All of the same details that are on the front of the coat or on the back of the coat, the three rows of puffing. And I'll hold up this and show you that little delicate French trim. I'll tell you, I wish we had some of that coming out of France today, but I don't think I've ever actually seen that available. Thank you so much for coming to my sewing room today. I hope you've had a good time, and I'd like to invite you to come back next time. Thank you.